Hey YouTube, Brian LCS. Thanks for stopping by the channel in this video, The Amazing Spider-Man number 27 review. So let's take a look at the creative team. We have Zeb Wells writing and Ed McGinnis on pencils. And Cole, this is for you. We have Mark Farmer, inker. We have Mauricio Menez, colorist. And Joe Caramaga, letterer. We're going to get into spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you may want to tune away. Uh, let's take a look at the synopsis for this issue. So let's jump in. We pick up with the Black Cat and Spider-Man out and about. Looks like they are uh, fighting the Shocker. He's getting the upper hand at first, but we see Black Cat come in, and this is a little bit of a Black Cat setup. She's kind of trying to help Spider-Man feel a little bit better. And she mentions that she tipped off the shocker to kind of get him out on a, on a job here. And of course, then she got Peter Spider-Man out to kind of get his mind off of recent events. You know, and, and Spider-Man is, is telling Black Cat like, hey, you know, we need to be careful. You know, the sho shocker is a formidable, you know, foe. We need to be careful. And then we see the shocker try to, hit them with a blast and it looks like the black cat has sabotaged his um shocker uh bracelets and you know he now he's mad he's angry with them and said i'm gonna kill you you know and, and again spider-man's reminding black cat like look you can't take these things you know lightly because you just never know what's going to happen and the shocker comes at them and spider-man just lays lays them out basically hits them with a a right punch that basically knocks him out. And then Black Cat, you know, asked, you know, are you feeling better? And, you know, he's like, look, this isn't a game, you know, people can get hurt. So he's still kind of in a funk from, you know, the recent events with Ms. Marvel and the Emissary. And then we see uh, Doc Ox, uh, mechanical arms kind of peeking over and, and watching them. And Black Cat messages, yeah, messages uh, Norman Osborn to see if he can send in a, you know, a cleanup team to take care of Shocker. So we, we, we cut to uh, Norman Osborn now, and he's talking to one of his lawyers uh, about some recent events that happened in Gold Goblin number five. And um, there was a, an incident where the Queen Goblin was killed. Norman Osborn, as the Gold Goblin, basically killed her. And so the lawyer's explaining to Norman that, uh, you know, there's no, going to be no charges pressed against him you know, basically that he's not going to be responsible for her death and so you know we see these kind of flashback he's having norman's kind of having flashbacks and he doesn't look good even after he gets this news that he's not going to be in legal trouble over it and then we cut to spider-man peter parker back at home and he's coming in from the you know the the dust up with the shocker and we see him holding miss marvel's mask and, you know, he's kind of thinking about her and, you know, pondering some of the things that happen. And then he falls asleep. And then we see in Slinks the Doc Ox, uh, you know, arms and kind of tucks Peter in and then heads off. And then we're on top of the rooftop here. And we introduce Doc Ock and we see him. He's, he looks like he has another set of arms and he's basically saying, you know, why to his, the other set, basically saying, why are you betraying me? So, uh, and then we go into this, uh, Doc is back at his lab and he's basically, you know, talking through with his tentacles that he needs to do some upgrade and that the, that set of tentacles, a love for Peter Parker. And, you know, maybe that, that it was, um, brought on by some of the memories from Doc Ock's own mind when Doc Ock became Spider-Man and took, took, you know, his body over for a period of time. And so we see Doc going through some upgrades, making some changes, going to build in some re redundancies so that, you know, he is, um, mechanical arms can't go off and do their own thing. Uh, and, he, and he states here that he's going to, you know, be filling them with nano fluid. And I'm not sure what that is, but that's what he's doing. And then we cut to Oscorp and Norman is still, you know, kind of pondering some of the recent events and, you know, just kind of beating himself up a little bit and in, in walks uh, Peter Parker. You know, and Peter basically, you know, he's coming to check on him to see how he's doing and, and 
Norman thinks he's going to kind of come and, and yell at him for some of the recent events. You know, that Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, was interning only to keep an eye on Norman. Uh, and, you know, and Peter basically just reassures him, look, I'm just, with all of the recent events, I wanted to make sure you were okay, that I didn't kind of push you over the edge and maybe, you know, back to the Green Goblin. But you know, Norman says, look, no, that's not going to happen. And, you know, and Peter just re reassures him and says, look, I, you know, I believe you. And so uh, Norman is feeling a little bit better, the fact that Peter is, you know, backing him up and really, you know, becoming a friend. And then we cut to uh, Ravencroft, where we see these two uh, scientists, assuming, or, or lab guys, and they're talking about somebody who was recently brought in and not, um, not autopsied, uh, because they wanted to keep the body in whole. And there we go, we see the um, uh, Queen Goblin now still alive. And then we cut to J. Jonah Jameson, and he's screaming on somebody uh, at somebody on the phone over a... Uh, a newspaper article and some and some photos and he gets a banging at his door and we see Doc Ox beat up dismantled tentacles come to J. Jonah and that's where we leave off for this issue uh, overall this was an okay issue you know given the recent events and some of the big craziness that has gone on a couple things I didn't really that didn't kind of make sense to me. Like Black Cat now reappears. You know, she's been dating Spider-Man, Peter Parker, and she was really non-existent in the whole um, emissary, you know, Raven thing going on. She was MIA, and now she's back. She's kind of a little bit, a little bit weird. Like convenient that she wasn't around for any of those events, couldn't help out, and now she's back. Uh, and the other thing that kind of struck me weird was the way. Peter was mourning Miss Marvel, holding her mask and looking at it lying in bed. Kind of, it kind of seemed a little bit out of character. You know, the fact that she was an intern at Oscorp, uh, you know, maybe they would go visit the family. Uh, you know, she lives in New Jersey. You know, you'd think maybe there would be something more there than him just dangling the mask in front of his, you know, face lying in bed. I don't know. It just seemed, it seemed very weird. To me, that I got out of character, as I, as I said. But overall, an, an okay issue, uh, you know, kind of moving past the big recent storyline. Uh, looking at my review system, five webheads being the best, one being the worst. I'm gonna go right in the middle, two point five, for this issue. Just okay for me. Uh, I'm glad we're past some of the craziness, but um, you know, I think we still see, we still have more to tell about Paul and. Uh, MJ, uh, you know, they were non-existent in this issue. So uh, interested to see where that storyline goes. I don't think we've seen the last of, um, well, we certainly haven't seen the last of, of MJ and Paul, but I don't think the story, I don't think they're going to live happily ever after, which I said, you know, which I said uh, in last review as well. So, but that's it. Let me know what you think uh, down in the comments. What did you think? If you're reading this, what did you think? Uh, if not, what do you think of my assessment of the, uh, my review of this uh, issue? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.